Who do you think that that sounds like? Oh, which chapter is that from? I'm um, getting a little deja vu vibes from. You probably heard it. You probably heard it. Which chapter is that? I'll, I'll say it's 53. Name? I'll give I'll give you the name in a second. I promise you. I'll give you the name, bro. No, not yeah, yet. Yeah, not yeah. yet. <laughs> Ain't gonna be slick with me, dog. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, I'm a Christian myself, so um, I look into Islam, I, I even <laughs> read the Quran, so uh, big thing for me is G the difference of Jesus. Obviously, that is a big thing. We, we're monotheists, we believe in God, we believe in the prophets, but it's about what we believe about the prophets that I see is like a fundamental like difference there, you know? So, um, and what the, what the Quran says about the Bible, that's like what it talks about the previous scriptures. That right there, when I was reading the Quran and I saw what it said about like the Torah, the Injil, and stuff like that. That honestly fascinated me. But what? So, what is your guys' view on what the Quran says about the Bible? Yeah, I think the Christianity and Islamic texts in general, even the old ones, share a lot of correlation. If you like the Book of Genesis, yeah, yeah, yeah. chapters in Genesis, especially yeah. 37 to I believe 39, the story of Joseph. You know? Yeah, uh -huh. he's a young kid gets betrayed by his brothers mm -hmm. and then through his character and his resilience he rises to a position of authority yeah 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 and even in that chapter uh i believe joseph talks about god and his deeper connection with god yeah. his ability to interpret dreams yeah, yeah we yeah, have yeah. that same in surah yusuf as well mm -hmm. but there's this different correlation where the quran explicitly mentions allah as the one and only god okay. but in uh, christianity there's just god so there's that monotheism but yeah who is the figure of worship, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just some different correlations and I think it's really interesting. I've looked into Christianity a little bit yeah. and I definitely, there's there's a lot of correlations. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, uh, Abraham, his sons, yeah. the tribes of Israel, I mean, like chapter two is heavy on the story of Moses and Israel and stuff like that, right in the Quran, Surah Baqarah. So yes, it's a lot of, there's a there's a connect there Absolutely. right um i think so when it comes to who god is and like um that's the question that's the question you know yeah and that's like and i think uh people try to like logically define it but you know there's a lot of strong faith when it comes to christianity i've visited mm -hmm. churches and there's uh, many people who are very very faithful towards christianity but then yeah. you visit mosques there's people who are very very faithful towards islam yeah, so I yeah, think yeah. that question can be answered through faith and faith only. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think yeah. you can't define something that's supposed to be faithfully believed in through logic. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's one of the yeah, yeah, it, it'll have a limit. Uh, you, you can talk about it logically, but if you're talking about God, there's a faith, there, there, yeah, faith, there's a yeah. going to be a roadblock where yeah, that takes over definitely. So so what in my, when, in my conversations with some of my Muslim friends, they have told like it's a constant thing that I hear, but like uh, we believe in the Bible or the Torah and Angel and the, and the scriptures um, as they are, were originally in their form, right? That they believe that they have been tampered with and stuff like that. Do you guys hold the same view? About that, about the scriptures being corrupted, not in their, like, we, we, they, they tell me I don't have the original gospel and stuff like that. Um, in, in terms of Christianity alone? Well, not, not just alone, like, so like, if I say, oh, look, like, the, the Quran says that I have to believe in the, in the gospel, right? I have to follow it. And they'll say, yes, but that's the original gospel. You don't, ha you so where don't do have, you don't have. Where do they get that information from? <laughs> they're, they're, it's just something they say. That's like, you know, if you, so for that, you have to really track back all the old texts and all this. And I mean, mm. if you say that, do you have the evidence to back that up? That mm. the Bible, even the mini Bible that you're holding in your hand is yeah. corrupt or it's incorrect. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you have to have that evidence. Same thing correlates with even Quran, even with Gita, same thing. Dude, know? I like you. I, that's what I say. That's what yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I say, okay, if it's... Once if again, you're... I think the underlying foundation being the faith itself. Yeah. You know? Okay, for sure. Yeah. So, so then, so then you you don't believe that like the the scriptures were like corrupted in any way you you believe that it's Again, it's still I, I need the evidence either that proves it or does not prove it. yeah yeah, yeah that's how it is if you look at it from an academic point of view mm -hmm. or from a historian's point of view yeah because this is history yeah absolutely so you have to consider the evidence absolutely. or at least that something that sort of implies that somewhere down the line the text was yes corrupted. exactly I, I like i said i like you a lot that's that's different usually a different response than i usually oh, yeah. get but i appreciate that because that's an honest approach you know like what's do what's what's the evidence that you have to say this on either side I love it so then uh, so then about Jesus then okay so 
if according to the Quran, I have to follow the gospel, right? I have to believe in all the scriptures, even Muhammad as a, as a, as a prophet that came after him. Right, they're all supposed to be one message, they're all supposed to be in line with each other. But obviously there's core differences. When I read the gospel and I read about Jesus, I see that, you know, he was crucified and rose again on the third day. I see that he's the son of God who, you know, saves the world from their sins, right? In Islam and the Quran it has a different narrative when it comes to Jesus, that he wasn't crucified, pr pretending on, you know, pertaining to that verse. Um, that he's not the son of God. That's straight out no way, you know. Mm -hmm. How do I, or how do we reconcile that then? Yeah. The, once again, the fundamental right. principle I mean, not, with Christianity is uh, if you're a Christian and you say that I don't believe that Jesus is the son of God, you're not considered Christian. Right, right. And if I, as a Muslim, believe that, oh, Jesus is a son of God, and I myself am directly opposing to the Islamic principles. Yes. Same thing with the Christianity yes, principles, yes. you know. And uh, the big thing is that believing in the oneness of God Allah and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the final prophet. Mm -hmm. you know, that's actually one of the things that you have to consider in the Shahada when you're converting to Islam. Mm -hmm. So it's just once again one of those things. As a Christian, you have to have firm faith in the fact that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Yeah. But when you look at it from an Islamic point of view, you have to believe that Allah is the one and only God. Mm -hmm. And Prophet Muhammad is the final prophet. Uh -huh. God does not have any sons. Or right, right, right. So, so how, like, let's once say... Once again, pertains back to the four differences that we have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so I'm, I'm like, so this is, this is, obviously as a Christian, this would be what I would say for me was a problem. Yeah. When I was Absolutely. reading the Quran, I was right. And so, I mean, and for a Muslim, it would be a problem for, for them. Absolutely. My, my thing is, is like, um, it's when the Quran says that I have to believe in the gospel, right? And I have to... Like, I, I don't stand on nothing if I don't stand on the scriptures that was revealed and stuff like that. So if I do that, like, I think it's chapter 5, verse 47, it says, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed in it. You know, it's one of my favorite verses. So I'm like, yeah, that's right. If I judge by the gospel, the gospel says Jesus died by crucifixion, that he's the son of God, then that would mean that for me, anything outside of that is objectively false, right? So how, as a Muslim, how, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So how, as a Muslim, do you, do you reconcile, like, is there a reconciliation for that? Because for me, that would mean that is Islam is, like, it, Islam is making a mistake by saying that the gospel is true. Because it, like, kind of works against itself in my eyes. Do you, do you, do you know that if they, they, if they mean by the biblical version of it like it's they're completely referring to the bible itself or mm. is it another islamic text that is referring to? Oh, so it's referring to, to, the, to the gospel you know so like so historically the gospel has always been what you know the church has used for two thousand years right you know the, the new testament like we don't have anything else other than that we've had little things to try to come up that has been like you know seen as forgeries and well, stuff. That aspect once again is like the evidence, right? So there's people coming up to you saying, "Oh, the gospel might be corrupted," mm -hmm. and then you could come up and say, "Give me evidence," mm -hmm. and I have to come up and say, "Okay, so where is the evidence that this is the exact biblical gospel that the Quran is talking about?" Mm -hmm. so if you could provide the evidence for that, because in Islam, if you believe anything apart from Allah being the only God mm -hmm. and Prophet Muhammad being the final prophet of Allah. Yeah. If you believe in anything apart from that, there, there's going to be another prophet or there might be another soul divine figure, like somebody else apart from Allah that deserves the same amount of worship. Yeah. You are going against the very fundamental core mm -hmm. of Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in theory, you will not be considered Muslim. Right, right. Same thing as, uh, same thing once again in Christianity. If I were to come up and say, oh, there's this text that suggests that, you know, Jesus might not be the Son of God or there might be another son, then uh, I'm going against the core values of Christianity itself, mm -hmm. you know. And then once again, that argument is stitched back to the faith aspect of it, right? There's something within you that makes you believe in Christianity. You mm -hmm. just know there's a God and Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Same thing with me, that I know there's Allah. And Prophet Muhammad is the final prophet. Yeah. For, for, so for me, it's not so much like a... Like the faith, for, I believe that there's evidences that that Jesus brought and came with that that proved that he was who he said he was. Right? That, like I believe in the historicity, like the, the crucifixion was a historical event, um, the empty tomb historical event, right? And um, you know the apostles going around saying we saw him, he's alive, and them dying for what 
they believed they saw, you know, and then um, the emergence of the church after that and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I, I have my reasons that of why I put my faith in, in it. Jesus. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so now because of that, when I'm looking into the Quran and I'm looking at what it says about Jesus and I see that obviously it, it, it has core differences and objections to what I believe you know goes to the historical Jesus for me like that's like I'm I have to make a judgment at this point you know and it's faithful judgment yeah well not just a faithful judgment. it's like it's based off the off the evidences that I'm lining from uh, Christianity yes, yes yes so Christianity and Islam so weighing it weighing it both out and I have to I have to make that judgment I, and so based off the judgment I'm like this in Islam seems inconsistent with like the historicity of Jesus and like even within itself like if when, it's, when you ask, like, for example, are you are you sure that it's talking about, like, the biblical gospel or the, you know, is there some Islamic text that it's referring to? Which is an excellent question. When I look into Islamic sources, like, um, like, uh, the life of the prophet, have you read that by Ibn Ashan? Ibn Ashan? Oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll show you that really quick. There's a, it's the earliest biography of Muhammad that we have. And on page 103 and 104, you have uh, this narrative where Muhammad is basically sending out his companions to spread the message of Islam. And he, and he does it, he says, just like Jesus did when he sent out his disciples. And he names them as, you know, Matthew, names them, uh, even Paul, he names them, and names John, and says that John wrote the gospel as Jesus dictated it. And so like, this is even in an Islamic source. I'm like, whoa. So they, even they, even early Islam acknowledges the gospel that I have, you know, like this whole, there's a different gospel or something like this, kind of a newer type of like thought process is what I'm saying. So like, if that is the case, that the gospel I have is definitely the gospel that the Quran is talking about, then I believe Islam has an internal problem, you know, because if, if the gospel that I have is true, then that would mean that the Quran is false because it goes against the gospel. You get what I'm saying? I think I think you bring up a good point, and uh, you say that the evidence that you received from uh, that you read about Jesus Christ, yeah. the evidence that you received, yeah, yeah. leads you to believe that the Quran has inconsistencies when yeah. it comes to. I could say the same thing about what I've read about Prophet Muhammad and uh, what I've read about the Quran. Mm -hmm. That uh, the Bible has some aspects that do not exactly correlate with the history that seems to be true and uh, I think you bring up excellent points about the gospel mm -hmm. this and that but um, I do believe that fundamentally if you were to go and say that you know, Jesus is not the son of God you would no matter the evidence I bring up I would not be considered Christian because I'm denying the very the, the very first aspect mm -hmm. that you need to be a Christian yeah so if I were to come and say that Quran has inconsistencies or there's anything apart from Prophet Muhammad not being the final prophet mm -hmm. or God having a son or mm -hmm. anyone else apart from Allah being worthy of worship, yeah. I'm going against the Quran itself. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to that, so you have to consider those two aspects. That I, d I definitely do. So, so, yeah. so the area that I would like to go to basically is why, I would ask you why, why do you believe that? Remember, actually, can I give you why I believe? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. My, I'll do mine first before I like try to ask you your. So, I believe that an important thing, and this is one thing I noticed that m Muslims cherish is <laughs> continuity. Like the 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 constant thing that I hear with Islam is that, you know, the all the prophets had the same message, and they they presented the same theology and the same God, one God, one worthy of worship. He sends the prophets obey him, submit to him, and stuff like that, right? And that is something I fundamentally agree with, that there's continuity. And that was actually one of the things that, like in the Bible, how you tell if someone is a false prophet is if they're not in line with what God has, has revealed. If they come out and they say, hey, I'm a prophet, but they're contradicting what the prophet said, then they're not a prophet. You can X them out, you know? So continuity for me is important. And so the reason why I believe what I believe about Jesus is like I see the prophets teaching the same thing like for example about the Messiah and the prophecies about the Messiah what he will do what he will be like and things of this and things of this nature so there's one thing I want to show you that's one of my favorite verses in the Bible is that okay okay and I want you I want your thoughts 
By the way, have you you said you looked into you looked into Christianity a little bit before? Christianic texts. I haven't I've not necessarily fully read the Bible. Okay, yeah. okay, for sure, for sure. So this might be fresh for you. At least this this chapter. So this is um well I'll, I'll read it and you and I want you to tell me who you think it sounds like, okay? Absolutely. Okay, so <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll give you all the information where I'm reading from. So it says he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one who from men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Upon him, uh, I'm sorry, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And upon him was the punishment that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. So like, if I were to ask you like, who does that just sound Which like? Chapter is that? I'll, I'll tell you in just a second, I promise. But it's Isaiah. Isaiah? Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Okay. No, it's, a, it's a very good quote. Um, yeah, it's, it's very good. Uh, it mm. does share some correlations. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. So if you were, if you were to guess like, off of the sound of this, right? Off reading this, what, who do you think it fits? Who do you think this fits? Well, I, I, I'm asking you. I'll give. I'll, I promise. I'll give my opinion. <laughs> hmm. it's, a, it's a good question. And, uh, obviously, in both Quranic and biblical texts, when you when you take some quotes, uh, you can interpret as. Uh, if you, if, you, if you read the Quranic verses as a Christian, yeah. you would think that, oh, this shares correlations with Christ. Mm -hmm. But if I were to read it, I'd say, oh, this shares correlations with Muhammad. Do you believe that? But they, that? But they don't necessarily, but they don't necessarily have to pertain to each other. You know, it's like I, as a Muslim coming from purely Muslim background, mm -hmm. could read a quote entirely from the Bible and think, hmm, this shares some correlations with the Prophet. And you, as a Christian, could read a quote from the Quran, a verse from the Quran. So, hmm, this shares correlations with Bible's interpretation of Christ. Bible's interpretation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so I, I think that going beyond like personal interpretation, I think that we can. What would be your take on it? I gave you mine. Yeah. So, like, I think, like, I think that there is a, I think, like, there's a clear de description, like, there's a laid out description of what this person is or what he does, or what happens to him, that we can like narrow it down. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like, so it says, for he was pierced for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was crushed and punished for our iniquities, and it says that the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. You know, we can, we can cross. Like, obviously, we don't believe. You don't believe that Muhammad, God put our sins on Muhammad, or that he was pierced for our sins or transgressions, that he took our punishment. You know, there's only one person that that fits, that, that, that narrative, right? And that's, that's Jesus. Jesus died yeah, for the sin. Exactly. So, like, even if, like, you know, without being a Christian or a Muslim, you hear that and you know the story, like, you know the narrative, like, you know, you're, if you're in the U.S., you know the story of Jesus, even if you don't believe in it. And you're like, you read this, you're like, oh, yeah, that's talking about Jesus, Absolutely. you know? And um, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it has particular descriptions that, like, as clear as day, yeah, well, it's talking about Jesus, you know? And so it's, it's stuff like this. So this is Isaiah 53. This was written 700 years before Jesus. So, so your point being, if you were to go up to anyone, even someone who's an atheist, mm -hmm. and read this story mm -hmm. here in yeah. Berkeley, yeah. Uh, they would kind of know that it's Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I could say if I went to uh, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and said something about that pertains to Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. they would immediately know it. Yes. So I think we have to consider the location that we're in too. You're true. Yeah. So, so this, this, this is my thing. Like you're, you're right. Like it's uh, what do what do people culturally know or uh, based on their knowledge, right? And so. I think that with, even with Muslims, they, they have a general understanding all over the world of the story, the Christian story of Jesus. Or uh, Jesus is, a, is also a, a character in the Quran. Exactly, a huge one. You can't say the same about Muhammad. About? 
About what? Is Muhammad mentioned in the Bible or mm, no? Yeah, no. So, yeah, yeah, of course. That aspect too. So when the people who read the Quran, they learn about Jesus, they mm -hmm. want to look into it a little bit more and say, mm -hmm. okay, I want to see the correlations. I want to see the variations. Yeah, what yeah, are yeah. the differences? What are not the differences? Yeah. I agree with this. I do not agree with that. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But the Bible that has no mention of the Prophet Muhammad. So, well. yeah. so it does not really give uh, people who identify with Christianity an incentive to look into the Quran a little bit more. You know? Very true. That that, that's that's very true. That's a fundamental point. But that's very true. It pertains to each exact individual because a lot of people who are Christian, they are well aware of the fact that the Quran and the Bible have correlations as well as variations. Yeah. So it gives them an opportunity for them to look at the differences. Yes, you know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. I, that's actually something with me. Like, I would not have, I probably would not have, like, for example, I know more about Islam, way more than I do about Hinduism. Because right. Hinduism doesn't mention Absolutely. Christianity or anything Absolutely. like that, you know? When I found out that Islam has stuff to say about Jesus and our prophets, like we have we have that like common ground that we can talk about. That's what made me look into it. Absolutely. You know, so what you said is absolutely correct. Like Christians wouldn't have an incentive to dive into Islam if they don't know that it's talking. But but Muslims have an incentive to dive into the previous scriptures and stuff like that because it talks about the you know the people in the book. When you're growing up, you just hear things about you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Quran is the same. You know? mm -hmm. Because if you were raised, in, I assume a Christian background. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, I was raised in a Muslim background. We mm -hmm. hear that correlation, you know. Yeah. From pastors, maybe from imams. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear that that there's some different, yeah. some similarities, and yeah. some differences. Yeah. So, so okay. So nice, nice. So okay. So that's Isaiah 53. Uh -huh. There's another one I wanted to show you, sure, just yeah. really quick. So, because remember, I was saying for me, it's about continuity, right? So this is now. I'm gonna go to the Psalms. This is the Zabur. The Zabur, the Psalms of David. And so, this is what what he says in the Psalms about the Messiah. He says, start at verse 14 here. Now Psalm 22, like it's not long, but it's, it's really good if you have a chance. He says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. Um, my heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a poster and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death for dogs encompass me. Com a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast clothing from my lot. Right. So stuff like that, right? We this uh, is talking about the crucifixion. I yes, think? yes, sir, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, and you have to believe this in order to be a Christian. If you reject this idea, you're not Christian. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's, it's a core thing. But um, so what, what I'm saying is, it's like we're looking at. I'm looking at how the prophets or the previous scriptures that came before the gospel that I have, how they talked about the Messiah and what will happen to him, right? The Psalms, David is writing this a thousand years before Jesus is born. Isaiah, the one that showed you the first time, that's 700 years before Jesus is born. And so we're seeing this constant thread that the Messiah is going to suffer. The Messiah is going to be the the, the atonement sacrifice. He, God is going to put our sins on him. And then he'll return. Uh-huh, and then he'll return. So you have this this continuity with the prophets that's that's sharing this. Now, there, just for the sake of time, there's a few more, but I don't want to like, you know, bombard you or anything like that. Okay, yeah. But like there's a few more that talk about how the Messiah, like in Zechariah 12.10, if you, you might forget this, but in Zechariah 12.10 it says that he, like the people when he comes back, the Jews will see the one whom they pierced and they will mourn and cry they'll feel sorry for what they did yeah so that's that's another reference you know and um so you have these things that talk about the messiah suffering and going through this and then we have the gospel that where jesus pops up and says yeah this is me this is about me i fulfilled this so that's why i believe it like it's a continuity and so the problem i have with with muhammad per se is that obviously muhammad goes against that he's like no jesus didn't suffer he didn't go through that he's not the atonement for the sins the Quran just does not mention that and uh, it, obviously there's different aspects that you have to believe in mm. but yeah the quran there's no mention of jesus suffering in the quran or being right. crucified right, right, right. that's one of the fundamental aspects i think of christianity yeah you know? and even if you look at the story of joseph per se there's very very key differences mm. you know in yeah. uh, Islam, I'm not sure how it is in Genesis. I, my memory's a little foggy on it. But in Surah Yusuf, 
uh, Yusuf, Joseph, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. gets thrown in the well by his brothers. Mm -hmm. It might be a little bit different. Yeah, it was, it was a ditch, but the same See? thing. See, same it's, thing. It's, it's, it's some yeah. different correlations. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah. if I were to say the very, very most common thing that is repeated in Islam, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, there's only one God, Allah. Mm -hmm. and Prophet Muhammad is his final prophet. Mm -hmm. and once, if I were to say anything apart from that, if I were to reject the idea of crucifixion, that Jesus that suffered for our sins, I would not be considered Christian if I was Christian. But if I were to say that, uh, if I were to reject La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, the very first thing that comes with Islam, I would not be considered Muslim. Do you, would you be able to, because you said it doesn't like really touch on Jesus suffering or anything like that. Could you be a Christian, uh, I mean a Muslim and, and, do, and still believe that Jesus was crucified? Maybe not have the same theological things like, oh, he was crucified for my sins and stuff like that, but can you believe Jesus was crucified and still be a Muslim? You know, uh, it's, uh, if, if I were to believe, fully, completely believe in the biblical interpretations, that means I'm believing that Jesus is also... See, if I believe in that, then I have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and yeah. that Jesus will return. Uh -huh. And the fact that um, Jesus died for our sins. Okay. We have to believe that. So at that point, I'm fully Christian, right? But yeah. if, I, if I believe in one thing and if I don't believe in another, then I'm rejecting the idea of religion as a whole, yeah. not even Christianity or Islam. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to say that, oh, well, I believe that there's only one God, Allah, but Prophet Muhammad isn't the final prophet. There's mm -hmm. going to be another prophet yeah. that will come later on. Yeah. You know? Or the prophet will be revealed later on. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not Muslim. Yeah. So yeah. you have to like really fully believe in it. You have to be all the way, mm -hmm. as you're in all the way about Christianity, I'm yeah. all the way about Islam. You know? So, so let, like let's say you have those foundational beliefs about Islam. There's one God, Muhammad is his last prophet, stuff like that. You believe in all the prophets. Um, but, but you also believe that Jesus was crucified. Not that he's the son of God, not that any of this, but you do believe that he was crucified. Well, that's like an individual thing, isn't it? If I, if I believe that Jesus was crucified, mm -hmm. then I, I have to believe that Jesus was the son of God and I have to follow the biblical interpretations because there's no Quranic interpretations of Jesus actually being crucified. There's, there's, there's something that it says, uh, it says, like talking about the Jews boasting, it says that they boast and that we've killed the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so Allah responds and says, um, they, they, talking about the Jews, they, na they, neither ki they neither killed him nor crucified him, but it was made to appear so to them. Um, but rather we, um, uh, but we took him up to, uh, raised him up to, our, to ourselves. That's, that's what, that's the 4157. Went in an altered state, he didn't exactly die, went into occultation, he come back later on. Yeah, that, he, he, well, yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah, there's, well, there's, there's interpretation of that, like, um, because there's a verse that says that um, it's, uh, the word is mutawafika in the Arabic, which means to take the soul or cause to die. Um, and so, like, it happens even when you sleep. Like, it says that Allah takes the soul when you sleep. Um, some people say that that's like a, a temporary death or like a cousin or brother of death or something like that. But, but so, yeah, the, so Allah says in chapter 3, verse 55, I believe it is, that, you know, remember Jesus when I, uh, you know, muto afika will take your soul or cause you to die. So there's like a little kind of gray area there where whether Jesus died or not specifically. See, uh, in that, that quote that you showed me, mm -hmm. was it the Psalms? Yeah, yeah. Psalms, and uh, there's a very, very exact representation of Jesus getting nailed. And yeah, yeah. Like wax, and yeah. Expressed. Yeah. Like it gives you a representation of Jesus being crucified. Yeah. And that isn't exactly mentioned in the Quran. Right, you right, right. You do bring up some points about, you know, it's implied, but mm -hmm. the Quran never explicitly, directly states some things apart from a select few. It Correct. really implies towards some, just I like agree. the Bible. I agree. Apart from like crucifixion and mm -hmm. that Jesus is the Son of God, yeah. and that Jesus will return. Yeah. You have to believe those things to be a, to a Christian. Right. And the Quran doesn't exactly mention that. You know? So if I were to believe in Jesus being crucified from how it is mentioned in the Psalms, yeah. then I'm rejecting what was going on in the Quran. You know? Because it's one or the yes. other, right? Yes, 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 yes. And yes. Uh, I can say, oh, I believe this, but then I don't believe that. Yeah. And if I, as a Christian, come up to you and say, oh, I believe in the crucifixion, but I don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I have to believe that. Yeah. So if I were to come up and say that, you know, I believe in the Quranic interpretation of Jesus, but I don't believe that Prophet Muhammad is a final prophet, I won't be considered Muslim. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's funny. You I, have I, to I, I, believe I, those yeah. things. You know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 that's how it is. Yeah. So, so what are your thoughts then on? Oh, how you doing, brother? 
What, so what are your thoughts on like the so the, the the thread that I was I was drawing with the continuity of the of the prophets? Do you think that that holds weight to the truth of a matter, uh, whether something is like true or happens if it's like consistent? What what, what are your thoughts on that? Because for me, like I said, like that's a main thing is the consistency of the message of the prophets. If they're consistently saying the Messiah is going to die, the Messiah is going to be crucified, the Messiah is going to take our sins. Isn't that what we should believe if we believe the prophets? Yeah, well, the same thing can be said with like the revelations in the Quran, you know? The prophet kept giving revelations and there's that consistency you can find in the Quran too. Recurring messages, recurring themes, recurring aspects. And the Quran also has consistency. And uh, yeah, you could say like consistency is an aspect to authenticity. But it's one of the aspects, it's not one of them. So, so you're talking, when you say in the Quran it has consistency itself, that would be the Quran itself with what it talks about saying that it's consistent about what it talks about, right? But not, what I'm saying is that because... It never directly says it. You have to read it and it like gives very, very heavy implication that it is consistent. The Bible never exactly says, believe in the Bible and the Bible only, right? right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. What, what I'm saying is... Like, so in the Quran, you're saying in the Quran, it demonstrates or shows that it's consistent within within itself, right? I understand what you're saying. My, so my thing is that, but that's that's just the Quran. If the Quran has internal consistency, what I'm saying is not just like, for example, if I was just going off the gospel, right? I can say that the gospel is internally consistent, but at the same time, the gospel, if the gospel contradicted the Psalms, uh, you know, or the prophets, it's not, it may be internally consistent, but it's not consistent with what came before it. Like it's contradicting those things. So like the Quran can have internal consistency, but my, my thing is that it's not consistent with what came before it. Yeah. Also, you provide an example? So like, like, yeah, for what I'm saying, like, so Jesus being the son of God who is crucified, mm -hmm. that is a consistent, we see it in the Psalms, we see it in the prophet Isaiah, prophet Zechariah, uh, even Daniel, we see, we see it in the prophets, and then we also see it in the that gospel. That Jesus is the son of God. That Jesus is the son of God, and that Jesus is crucified. Uh -huh. So right now, if, of course, in the, um, in the Quran, it rejects that Jesus is the son of God, uh -huh. Um, and is and it is consistent about that. It's consistent. Jesus is not the Son of God. So that's an internal consistency. There is no Son of God, not just Jesus. There right, right. There is no Son of God at all. Right. So it's consistent. That, yeah, it's consistent that there that you know Allah is not a father. Right. It's consistent on that. But that concept that goes against what the previous scriptures say. It's not consistent previous with the Islamic and Quranic scriptures. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the gospel. They say that, the, that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So, like the psalm, like for example, the, the psalm says that the Messiah is the Son of God. Uh, prophet, Prophet Daniel say that you know the Messiah is the Son of God. Um, uh, the gospel obviously says that Jesus is the Son of God. He says it himself, like I am the Son of God. You know, you know, my Father sent me. You know, all that kind of stuff. So you have these scriptures that the Quran points to, like. It says I, it came confirming these scriptures. It's in line with them, but at the same time, it's not consistent with them. See, Quran is consistent with with the oneness of God, Allah being the one and only God. Yeah. And then it's also consistent with saying that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final prophet. Yeah. So when we come to that, and all the prophets that came before him have the same deep connection with God, and they preach the same message. So there is consistency with prophets as well, with prophecy as well, and the we call them, you know, it's just what it's being consistent towards when it comes to Christianity and Islam. There's different aspects to it. So, if there's any inconsistency, especially like on core doctrines, wouldn't that be alarming? Like, if 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 there like God having a son is a core thing. That's like, that's no, as, as a Muslim, no, you don't believe that a, a prophet of Allah would ever teach that he has a son because you, you believe that that goes against his oneness. So if a prophet is teaching that, then he would be in Islam, that would be a false prophet. That would be, a, he'll be a liar, right? If he's trying to say, I'm a prophet of God, while at the same time teaching that God has a son. So that's a core thing that if, if there's a difference on that, then we have to weigh out who is consistent. If the prophets consistently teach that God has a son, and then Muhammad comes and teaches, no, God doesn't have a son, 
that's a problem, you know, because he's not in line with what the prophets taught. That's, that's, that's my position. It's like that continuity on something as core as that is it, it's a make or break, you know. But the prophets you were referring to are the Christianic interpretations of the not, not it's not Christian interpretation. It's like these are who this is who they are. You know, this when we go to their books, you know, when I go to the book of Isaiah, they're like he wasn't a Christian. You know, um, it's not my interpretation of him. I go to the book of Isaiah, I read what he says. You know, I go to the Psalms, I read what David said. I go to the Torah, I read what Moses said, you know, they, they weren't Christians, but they had, they, we can see their theology, we can see their revelation, we can see what they taught, you know what I'm saying? And these are all things that, that Moses point, uh, points to, that, or I'm sorry, that uh, Muhammad points to, like, I'm confirming these scriptures and these prophets. So if he's out of, if he's confirming these prophets and at the same time contradicting them, that for me is a is a big problem. Like, he's confirming the idea that God has a son. Is he, is he explicit? I don't think he's doing that. No. So so like that's that's the problem. That's yeah. for me. This is where I believe it's the dilemma. Is that he's he says that he confirms what the prophet said and in their scriptures, mm -hmm. but within his revelation, what does the prophet Muhammad himself preach. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad, so Muhammad himself preaches that Allah is absolutely singular and he doesn't have a son. Mm -hmm. Far be it from him. He's way that's above. That. Yeah, yeah, the only thing that's one of the things, but it's not the only thing. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things we can talk about. Absolutely. But yeah, I'm trying to just focus on certain, yeah, you yeah, know, the, the right, core right, thing, right? right. Uh, but yeah, you're right. But so just th that core fundamental message, like that is a, that's a big thing. That's a huge thing. That's a, you're in the, you're in the truth of, of, of uh, the religion or you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, even Allah says like people who say that the Messiah is the son of God, they are imitating disbelievers of old and Allah's curse be upon them because they're ignorant. You know, that's chapter 9, verse 30. Like, Allah is serious when it comes to him having a son. Like, he doesn't play about that. That's what I know from the Quran. And so when the prophets are teaching that he does, that God does have a son, that is, it's a make or break. Either all these different prophets were actually really dis disbelievers, um, and then that, that would be like still a problem with Muhammad because he's saying that these prophets are true. It just, it just doesn't work.